pressure coming. Broadus avoids it. Downfield, it is complete. Willie Tucker, he is gonna score. A quick hitter, lit up by Molino. Broadus will throw on third and 10, going for the end zone. Touchdown, Mustangs! There's a Mustangs coming back here, third and one. Brandon Howe will lead the way for Andre Broadus to pick up Andre the first Broadus down and a couple carrier. more. So number 31, Brandon Howe, looks like he's gonna have the fullback duties for a third straight week with Umo on the sideline with a hamstring injury. And those hamstrings, you just never know. And, and Umo was out here just like he was last week. He was a game time decision last week too. He was trying to get it warm, seeing what he could do with it. But uh, if those hamstrings aren't ready, they're not ready. And you're probably just gonna put yourself back if you try to Cole play Stanford, with a tender yeah. hammy. As Cole Stanford gashes a D for a big gain on first down up to the 36 of Portland State. Stanford coming in averaging seven and a half yards per carry with a 65 yard run, the longest against North Dakota play, earlier this year. And that's the thing with Cal Poly this season, seven and a half yards per carry for Stanford, seven and a half for Kristan Ivory, 7.1 yards per carry for Deontay Williams. I mean, every time these guys touch the ball, they're moving it. Here's how his first carry, it'll be a first down up to about the 30 and a half yard line. Number 31, Brandon Howe, the ball carrier. And now Cal Poly has got his no huddle He's revved up. The they have about three different tempos and the fastest speed that Cal Poly will work with offensively is they're trying to get the snap off about 20 seconds after the, the play ends. And quickly brought us under center and that's, that's quicker than 20 seconds right there. As Broadus will go to the air for the first time. Downfield for Stanford and he's got him. Touchdown. Stanford seems to be Cal Poly's home run hitter just making the big plays. We mentioned that 65 yard run. He had a 32 yard touchdown catch in North Dakota as well. And there he delivers another great catch. He had a great diving catch for about 40 yards last week as well. He is a big play man for the Mustangs this season. He has been sure handed as a receiver. Andre Broadus leading the big sky in passing efficiency. He doesn't throw it much, but when he does, he's usually on target. And Broadus has a 31-yard TD pass to Cole Stanford. Bobby Zalit pounds it through to even this thing up at seven. And settle in, folks. Five minutes and 10 seconds in with 7-7. Seven, seven. Don't be surprised if these teams put up some numbers here this evening. The 10th touchdown pass of the season for Andre Broadus. Just that one interception against Wyoming there. It is the... As we take a look at the Big Sky Conference standings coming into this one, Bill. And Cal Poly tied with Eastern Washington. The Eagles are playing right now. And we'll keep an eye on their score against Sacramento State. Sacramento State three and one in the conference. They're certainly legit. That's where Cal Poly goes next week. Uh, Northern Arizona also in action right now. So we'll keep you updated uh, on those two scores. Earlier this afternoon in the Big Sky, North Dakota beat Montana. Montana, one and three now in the Big Sky. Andrew, how's the, uh, how are those games going? Right now it is Top-ranked Eastern Washington at home, leading Sacramento State 31-21, 11-22 left in the fourth quarter. And after almost pretty much a scoreless first half, 16-ranked Northern Arizona taking a 21-0 lead over UC Davis about halfway through the third quarter. Cal Poly still has both Eastern Washington and Northern Arizona on its schedule. Portland State has a tougher road to hoe in the big sky because uh, they play Eastern Washington, Montana State, and Northern Arizona in the big sky, whereas the Mustangs avoid Montana State as Bobby Zalit kicks it out of the end zone. Hope Hanselman, field side. What's going on, Hope? Guys, we just saw number 62, Mike Freeman, come off the field limping. It's his left ankle. It looks like it's broken or dislocated. He's not coming back for the rest of the game. Yeah, thank you very much, Hope. And uh, from the way that his leg, that his foot was twisted. I'd be surprised if we see Freeman the rest of the season. He has been very good. Again, started the season as the starting left guard, was moved to right tackle after Winkleman's injury. For Cal Poly offensively, what that means now is they're just really thin on the line. I mean, Winkleman, Winkleman is just as good of a right tackle as Freeman, but uh, now the depth goes down uh, considerably. Is now when you're talking about backups, now you're talking about redshirt freshmen. Back to that pistol look with three wide receivers. McDonough will roll right. And he's going to tuck and try to pick up some yards on his own, and he'll pick up about a yard and a half. Seemed to run about 15 yards in that play. And McDonough's bigger than the Cal Poly linebackers. So, I mean, don't be surprised if he runs over some people today. And a two on the play, second and eight. 
as there's Portland State's no huddle offense. Three wide receivers spread. He'll pump fake the wide receiver screen, and now he does give it up, and that's going to be a loss of a couple yards. Is you know, I'm not sure if Cottrell Anderson really wanted that there. Not a whole lot he could do with it, but uh, uh, McDonough didn't have a whole lot of other options there as Jake Irwin makes the tackle on that wide receiver screen for a loss uh, of a couple. Irwin, one of those players who was a game time decision coming in, he hyperextended his knee last week at the game, but apparently is giving it a go this week. Third and 11. A draw, Justin Lilly, not enough for a first down, Portland State. You would think, forced into a punt here, and now the punt team does come on. And the PSU offense, they'll, they'll throw three different running backs out there. DJ Adams, number 10, and Shaquille Richard, number 20, have been the most successful ground gainers, but uh, on that third down play, Justin Lilly was in there. Lilly's the, the best blocker out of the backfield. Thomas Dundam, the reason that he's on this Portland State team, the punter, is because he put together a YouTube video of him punting. The Portland State coaches saw it, they liked what they saw, and they brought him in. The former uh, Aussie Rules football player kicks one deep to Chris Nichols, who fields it at his own 22-yard line. Not much room for Nichols, but he is able to weave his way for free space, and here goes Nichols, one to beat. And the punter does bring him out of bounds at the 45. Chris Nichols coming in averaging 13 yards per punt return, 27, a long return for him this year. And that's the thing, he hasn't busted the big one yet, but he has been consistently Chris very Nichols good return, picking up yardage like that on those punt returns. Three, David, once you hold your breath as he's about to catch it, and once he return. makes that catch and you can finally breathe again, you, it's pretty exciting to watch that guy run. It was a 23-yard return there for Nichols. Mustang start this drive and so Broadus, the, the senior, will bring his guys back on. Go down to that traditional triple option look here on first down with a receiver to each side, a slot back to each side, and Brandon Howe behind him. And Nichols with that breakaway speed ran a 10.87 in the 100 back in high school. He's a little guy, but he's lightning quick. Option right for Stan Ivory. A big pickup, call it a first down up to the 44. Ivory, Cameron the Pullum carrier. is field side with the Portland State team. Cameron, what do you got? Well, guys, first of all, we got some light showers out here. It's starting to rain a little bit. We're going to keep an eye on that as we move through the game to make sure and see Illegal if this ship. is going to affect any Seven sort of outcome offense. moving into halftime. We'll keep you up to date on this weather as we down. move forward in the game, guys. Yeah, San Luis Obispo trying to make uh, Portland <laughs> feel at home with the overcast skies and a little bit of a drizzle as this play is coming back after a penalty. The Mustangs move back five yards rather than up 11. And so now first and 15 from the 40. Of course, ball security becomes even more important when there's a missed or a little bit of Deontay wetness Williams on the field. Deontay Williams is loose, brought down after a gain of 16. Michael Williams on the tackle. As if Williams could have gone over him, he would have been gone. But Williams is never trying to go around people, over people. He's always trying to go through people. <laughs> and uh, Williams has probably scouted that. He, he knew that, hey, I just got to get down and kind of uh, be, a, be a road bump and, and, and force him down. Cole Stanford and Brandon Machakowicz providing the big upfield blocking for the Mustangs. As Freeman is carted off the field. Fresh set of downs as Broadus will look to pass under pressure from Sluss. Avoids it for a time being. Is that going to be a fumble? No. They're going to say he was down as Sluss was able to get him from behind his second sack of Andre the season. Andre rolled down at the 45. And these two teams coming in, the offensive lines have done their jobs. Portland State offensive line allowing just That's three sacks coming in. Cal Poly's coming into this one, al had allowed just four sacks and now make that five. Yeah, unbelievable numbers for both of these teams. They just don't get sacked very much. Andre Broadus has a ton of confidence in himself, though and he thinks that he can keep any play alive. That time he got caught from behind. The pitch is to Ivory. He's got great lead blocking in front of him. Big pickup, and now the Mustangs will have a third and very manageable coming up. Mark it at the 39, so it'll be a third and five after the big carry right from down on the play by number Ivory. Seven, Marquise Jackson, gain of 20. 
And in this situation, I don't think running is out of the question, the way that the Mustangs have been able to move it on the ground so far. And they'll go up the middle, Brandon Howe. He is going to be short of first down yardage, but uh, I'll bet uh, everything I've got in my pocket right now, Cowboy will go for it here on fourth and short. And not much Front of a decision. Quick one here. They've got about a half a yard to gain. Fourth down. Broadus will do it on his own. First down. Andre the ball carrier. Cal Poly now Game five for five on the, on the season and in fourth down, down conversions. And when, it, when it's fourth and one, normally near the goal line, you know that nine times out of ten it's going to be Broadus keeping it and getting that first down. Yep. But is there anything you can do about it? <laughs> so far, teams have not been able to prevent Andre from getting yardage as the underneath handoff goes to Williams, and that's eaten up. And that's a play that the Mustangs have put in this season. And it's essentially a counter play to the triple option. They, they show that they're going to option Andre right, the but then they Top give that quick little underneath Marcus handoff. Uh, and it's been very successful this season. But that Go time, game. Ivory went nowhere, uh, just back to the line of scrimmage. And that's it. Second and 10 as the Mustangs quickly back under center. Uh, got, gave a look there with the triple option. Now they look to the sideline. Offensive coordinator Brian Cook will decide whether he wants to stay in the same play or change it up. Cal Poly 15 a rushing play, 66 yards. And Broadus puts it in the gut of Powell. And how the ball carrier. Picks up a couple inside the 30-yard line. And with this triple option, when Andre snaps the ball, two on right the after he, he, he gets that snap, that's when he makes the decision on whether he's going to hand it off to the fullback or whether he's going to roll out an option one way or the other. So the fullback, he has no idea if he's getting the ball at the line of scrimmage. He's just got to be ready for it if the quarterback puts it there. Option to Howe. Fumble ball on the turf. Still on the turf. Here comes Portland State the other way. Fumble recovered by the Vikings. Broadus is the last guy who's got a chance, and he's not going to be able to make the play. Ian Sluss, his second touchdown of the season. The fumble for recovery goes Ian back Sluss. the other way, and Portland State's defense put some points on the board. A high pitch, and Howe's not, he's not really used to, to being the option guy, although I'm sure he's been getting a bunch of reps in practice over the last couple weeks. Thomas Carter likes it. Ian Sluss had a 56-yard interception return earlier this season. Number 19, Zach Brown Back into the, the end zone after. on a fumble recovery. And Portland State, 14. Cal Poly, the attempt is good. we'll be right back. 